Well, he calls himself the Silver Fox, but Robert Wayne Collins is better known as Australia's oldest fraudster. He has a history of finding his victims at church, and that's where we found the 80-year-old. On the trail Silver of the Fox. Silver Fox. We've got you. Hey. On one hand, he's thumping his Bible, while the other hand, he's stealing your wallet. You're meant to be on home detention. I am on home detention. What are you doing out for church? The new victims seeking justice. Watch him be destroyed. It's pretty devastating. <laughs> and the pastor providing solace to one of Australia's worst con men. Are you interested in facts, Pastor? Oh, you're a smart old <laughs> 80-year-old Robert Wayne Collins is Australia's oldest fraudster. Despite a criminal history stretching back to 1974, with 18 years spent behind bars, the man who calls himself the Silver Fox is allowed to serve his latest four-year jail sentence for seven fraud convictions as home detention. You might ask just how much of a threat could an 80-year-old actually be to the community? Well, don't take my word for it, these are the words of a district court judge. I find you have no prospects of rehabilitation. There is not a drop of confidence that you will depart from this type of dishonest activity ever. We discovered Collins living at his Adelaide home back in March with his wife and assistant in some of his scams, Veronica Mohor, trying to tell us her husband's convictions were all lies. This is my home, my property. Sure, but don't try and tell me lies. Don't try to tell me lies. What we didn't know then was that there are even more alleged victims. It's had a massive effect. Um, it's devastated us as a family. Jason Jones was at his lowest point in life after a messy divorce when he says he was introduced to the Silver Fox as an accountant. Collins and wife Veronica visited Jason at his father's home to help with his finances. They worked together. They were like a pack of dogs, you know. It's almost like, you know, they're hunting people that are at their lowest possible point. Jason says after gaining his trust, Collins suggested he invest in an international private trade and also set up a self-managed super fund. When I sat down around the table with Robert and Veronica and the compounding you know, investment um, sounded very achievable. Jason has the added trauma of encouraging his father Dennis to invest too. Together they transferred close to $600,000 to accounts connected to the Silver Fox. Oh, I had to sit back and, and uh, watch him be destroyed, it's pretty devastating. <laughs> The pair say their money has never been seen again. At the time they invested with the so-called accountant, Robert Collins, they didn't know he was awaiting trial on seven fraud charges. When he was jailed in 2020, Veronica Mohor continued sending text messages assuring the investment was safe, even taking Jason to visit Collins in prison, who claimed the fraud charges were lies. The, the charade just went on and on and on. After his release on home detention, Collins started sending Jason emails, supposedly from the US Treasury Secretary, a hallmark of previous scams. He also claimed to have job opportunities direct from the Papua New Guinea Prime Minister, another tall tale he's told before. We grew up on the land. Dad, Dad's brought me up. I'm just a good old fashioned Aussie battler, mate. Handshake, look in the eye and, you know, and you know, you have my word, and that's my word. Um, these people don't function like that. They, they are absolutely ruthless. South Australian police have been investigating Jason's case for more than a year. The whole time, the Silver Fox remains free on home detention, even heading back to church. We obtained these pictures of him attending the Healing Life Church in the inner city Adelaide suburb of Wayville which live streams its service every Sunday and welcomes Robert Collins with open arms. The Silver Fox, we've hey. got you. Hey? You're meant to be on home detention. I am on home detention. What are you doing out for church? I'm allowed to. It's, a, it's streamed online. Couldn't you just watch it at home? No, I'm allowed to come to church. Is it essential to be here, is Who it? Are you, anyway? Dan Nolan from A Current Affair. 
South Australia's Department for Correctional Services wouldn't comment on Collins' case, but legislation allows leave passes to be granted for activities deemed exceptional, including religious leave. What can you tell us about Jason Jones's money? He invested a lot of money with you, it's all gone. What happened to that? The Silver Fox doesn't like being cornered, especially when he's playing the role of devout man of God. What happened to Jason Jones's money? Same old stories as before, saying he's a Papua New Guinea Prime Minister. They've heard this before, you're a notorious con man. We left as soon as the pastor requested, but hoped to be able to warn him and his congregation about the financial predator lurking in their midst. We will, but you need to know about one of your flock, Pastor. Pastor Barry Manuel was a Baptist minister before branching out to start his own church. He claims to have the ability to speak in tongues. Videos show him praying over believers. Give him more, Lord. Give him more. Give him more. Blowing into the microphone as the Holy Spirit is apparently entering. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Pastor Barry Manuel also claims to have healing powers, with Facebook posts explaining a woman he prayed for with terminal cancer was then cleared, as was another with a toothache. We prayed for a lady to have a tooth filled. The filling had come out. Moments later, she said that she could feel it was filled. Hello, oh, Pastor. There, are you? Yes. Did you want to? distribute no, these to your no, flock at all? No, I do not. Okay, it's just that your, your people need to be warned about his history. I know all about it. Okay. Are you at all concerned about what he spent his life doing? I've got no comment to make. The leaflets we'd made up detailed just some of Colin's extensive criminal history. I know your specialty is healing the sick, but his specialty is, is fleecing the flock. I really don't. Well, we're here to help you and no, we're here not. to help your, your, your no, followers. You're no, you're not. Unwilling to help us warn his congregation and unhappy with our questions too. Oh, good on you, you know, mate, I ought to... <laughs> what are you healing today, Pastor? Is it cancer or toothaches or what is you're it? You're a smart aleck, aren't you? What is it? What are you, aren't you a smart aleck? Well, no, that's what you... They're your own words, not mine. What? We soldiered on trying to warn these unsuspecting people who are about to share a room with one of Australia's most notorious con men. Guys, we're just from a current affair. We're just public safety announcement for one of the parishioners in there today. And there is crimes that have been committed. He's allowed in, into this church. He actually duped one of his, some of his victims using religion, so. Thank you very much. No worries, we're just here to help. They're facts, ma'am. Have a read of it later if you like, but it's all facts. Thanks. Pastor Barry Manuel seems more interested in warning his flock to ignore us. Are you interested in facts, Pastor, or just fairy tales? Because I'm trying to give you facts. You think I just made this stuff up. It's true story about one of your parishioners who has used his religion to dupe victims in the past, and you don't seem concerned about that. You don't know what I'm concerned about, and I'm not telling you what I'm concerned about. He's not a changed man. He'll never be a changed man. Lawyer Andrew Carpenter has represented many victims of Robert Collins and believes nobody is safe in his presence. The fact that he's continuing to go to church when he has a history and a proclivity to defrauding people in a religious sense shows that he should not be given release to go to church. He shouldn't be released to go anywhere. And I confronted him about it towards the end and said, you call yourself a Christian? Oh, yes, yes, I, I pray to God. And I thought, wow. I hope there is a God and I hope oh, hell he can uh, see what this couple are, are doing to people. You don't have to worry about us, we're, we're quite at peace and we, we care for our people very, very well. So. so you'll look after them if they lose a couple hundred thousand dollars to him like other people have in the past? It's very um, kind of you, Pastor. Oh, you're a smart guy. The pastor doubling down on his defence of the silver fox in a later sermon, describing our intentions as evil. See, it's all a lie, but people will be told the lie and they'll believe the lie. God is seeing you. So is the district court judge. The Jones family has only one prayer they want answered. He should definitely be back in jail right now. I feel let down by the system, I really do. No one's safe. I mean, these people don't use guns, they use, they use a pen. Please, someone take it serious and, and do something about it.
can understand why they felt let down. And we're going to stay on the Silver Foxes case.